right. Well, thanks, everybody, for being here on this uh, very serious exercise today that we hope we'll never have to actually do in real life. But uh, given the state of the world we're in right now, we might have to. So we, we will be prepared. I want to thank a bunch of folks here, and then we'll, you'll be hearing from some of them before we get started here. I'd like to thank our federal partners, including ATF Special Agent in Charge, Sean Morrow. Our state partner and the ATF, excuse me, the FBI you'll be hearing uh, from here in a second. The state partners are Director Mike Dossett with Kentucky Emergency Management and his team. Our partners from across the river, Jeffersonville Police Department, Indiana State Fire, and the Indiana Department of Homeland Security, Indiana Department of Natural Resources as well. Our Louisville Metro Government first responders, uh, obviously LMPD, our fire department, surrounding fire departments with us here today. Agencies like our Office for Resilience and Community Services, it's doing the family reunification upstairs. Our nonprofit partners, including Red Cross, for coming together today to participate in a really important training that has been years in the making that you'll hear about in a second. I also want to thank the University of Louisville, uh, their athletic department for uh, give, allowing us to use the facility today, and stadium operations manager Michael Ortman as well. So, and if I've left some folks out. We'll catch up here before we're done here. But thanks, everybody. Okay. This is uh, something we've got to be prepared for and uh, some uh, kind of a sad reality of America and, and other countries as well. But mass shootings and large-scale violent incidents are far too common in our country. And it's almost like you grow up with them and then you kind of have them in your marker of your personal history. We can think about the Las Vegas shooting in 2017 with 60 deaths. Uh, Pulse nightclub in Orlando in 16 with 49 deaths, and Virginia Tech in 2007 and 32 deaths. There's obviously countless others, and there's an awful lot that, you know, just have single-digit deaths. And to have to look at them and say, well, they're just single digits, that's really unfortunate reality that we're living in right now. These mass casualty events are particularly problematic and require a lot of resources to respond to them properly. When you think about the possibilities for our city, uh, we're no stranger to hosting large public events. You know, think about the Derby, think about Thunder, think about the Kentucky Derby Festival, Tri-Festa, soccer games, football games, basketball games. I mean, it goes on and on. Obviously, first and foremost for all of these is we want the safety and security of our residents to be at the top of everybody's mind and our ability to execute that way as well. So that's why it's really important that we have events that provide our first responders and officials with the training and the tools necessary to take an active part in protecting themselves and our residents. And as we saw today, active assailant situations are unpredictable. They evolve very quickly. You know, what we saw today, think of if it was a real event, think about the chaos that would be happening all around that. So we got to practice so we can prepare for situations like that. Most active assailant situations are over within 10 to 15 minutes. So being able to show up ready to go, both mentally and physically, to deal with an active assailant and then have right, the right equipment deployed at the right time and the teamwork to get all this done is absolutely essential. And that's what Operation Thunderstruck was all about. Uh, exercise that's taking place today on both sides of the river involving more than 350 first responders and officials. And you'll hear more from our Indiana partners in a moment. Mayor Moore and Jeffersonville and I have communicated back and forth today just to touch base with each other as well, say, hey, is everything going okay? So it'll be a lot of communication going back and forth. And think about the, uh, how that could be complicated if communications went out. And that's what took place in Nashville here this last Christmas that really makes things difficult. So everything we've seen today and have been practicing for was made possible through a $2.3 million complex coordinated terrorist attack grant from the Federal em Emergency Management Association that we all know as FEMA. I want to thank Matt Gibson and the Kentucky Derby Festival for their support in helping us to secure the grant. Uh, we're all here today to train and build upon and sustain the capabilities of our local emergency management teams designed to respond not just the day-to-day -day incidents, but incidents like this, while also then identifying any gaps so they can be immediately addressed and resolved. That's really what we want to come out 
of today is, okay, here's something we learned. First responders, as we know, just every day have an incredibly challenging job and have to make decisions quickly, oftentimes like that, and then everybody's going to second guess them, but they got to go with their training. So providing trainings like this is just another essential tool to help them keep our community safe. Really want to say thank you to Jody Myman. He's our director of Metro's Emergency Management Agency that helped kind of organize all this over the past several months to make sure everything went off today as designed. So Jody, please share some thoughts with us. Thank you, Mayor. So uh, I'm going to talk just a little bit about what we what we had today and what the scenario was based on. Um, like he said, we, we got a grant a, a few years ago to be able to do this. Uh, Director Dawson, I believe, is going to talk about the grant specifics itself. But um, we designed an active shooter uh, terrorist type of event today. And one of the things that we really wanted to test was on both sides of the river. And, and uh, the grant was uh, was processed and, uh, and uh, approved because we wrote for a scenario that could potentially happen at Thunder Over Louisville where there was an incident on both sides of, of the river, uh, some type of coordinated attack. So one of the things we wanted to test again with our partners across the river was normally we can uh, share resources across the river if they need it. Um, but this was one that we were getting resource requests from each other from both sides of the river and we were having to deny those requests because we were as busy on this side as they were on that side. So we weren't able to share which um, which forced us to reach further into our state and their state to, to get the resources that they needed at the scene. Um, the initial response, like I said, it was an active shooter terrorist type of event. Uh, we had two officers that went down uh, very early into the situation, um, which forces adrenaline to the responding officers to be hyped up that even, even that much more. Um, the SWAT team, Louisville Metro Police SWAT team, uh, came in, engaged the subjects. Uh, they noticed that there were several victims that were down which led us into one of the other things that we wanted to test, which is our rescue task force. Uh, rescue task force, we've learned over the uh, country through some of these events that the earlier we can get medical responders into the scene, potentially into what we call a warm zone, um, is, is vital to, to saving the lives of the people that have been injured uh, within that. So we were able to get the rescue task force in between several fire departments and EMS agencies throughout the, uh, throughout the area um, in full armor, uh, body armor, to get in and take care of these patients potentially in a dangerous area where normally they wouldn't be put in a situation like this. Um, you've heard probably the program Stop the Bleed. Um, that's one of the big, uh, the big things that, that we learn from a lot of these incidents is to get into these areas and to, to get these people taken care of very quickly. We had the bomb team uh, come in and they, they had a couple devices uh, that they had to take care of and they've obviously got to be strategically careful uh, with, how they, um, with how they operate with those. Um, one of the big things that we're going to, or that we're testing as we speak, is our Family Assistance and Reunification Center. We know that the incident takes place, it's over with within 10 to 15 minutes, uh, but the recovery process begins then and it goes for days, weeks, and sometimes years. So we've got to be there for the families to take care of them, uh, to reunite them with their loved ones, and then to take care of them for many weeks after that uh, to get them all the things that they need. And then we, we set up a joint information center, and for the media that's very important because we want to get consistent information to you and the public as quick as we can. So we, we set up a joint information center with several public information officers across the area and different agencies to be able to get that information out uh, accurately and in a, in a good timely process, and we, or in a good timely fashion. And we were also communicating with our partners on the other side of the river because it, with it being a, a coordinated attack, we wanted to make sure that we were getting uh, consistent information um, out and again in a timely manner with both things that were taking place uh, on both sides of the river. Yeah, let's hear it for Jody Myman. A lot of work goes into this. I want th uh, when we put these exercises together too, we, we get the best people in the country to advise us on the design of these as well. So I'd like to recognize Clay Pecchio and his team for uh, coming out and help us here to understand what the challenges are, how to deal with them. They also help us evaluate this so we can improve. So thank you all. The state obviously uh, is super important. Uh, exercises like this, again, local, state, federal. Uh, we couldn't have a better partner than Mike Dossett with Kentucky Emergency Management. Uh, he's with us in all types of challenges that we have. They're there quick, they're there efficiently with the resources we need. So Mike, we really appreciate all of your assistance. 
Thank you, Mayor. On behalf of Governor Andy Bashir, thanks to our emergency responders numbering in the hundreds today, both in Indiana and Kentucky, and over and the over 50 local, state, and federal agencies on site in both states. And thanks to all of our responders for the life-saving efforts of our healthcare and emergency responders over the, over the past 20 months in the ongoing fight against this pandemic. And for your continuing efforts as vaccine champions, uh, get a shot, save a life. In the realm of emergency services, we most often look to the past in order to improve our response to crisis events in the future. The Complex Coordinated Terrorist Attack CTA grant program is a FEMA-funded initiative to assist jurisdictions in identifying capability gaps, developing scalable plans, training personnel, conducting exercises in preparation for violent crisis events. In 2016, the Indiana Department of Homeland Security partnered with Kentucky Emergency Management and Kentucky Homeland Security in a grant application that was selected for an award of over $2 million, one of the largest awards in this grant cycle. In cooperation with Louisville Metro Government and many other agencies, the grant scenario was written around the Commonwealth's largest annual celebration, the Kentucky Derby Festival, and the week's largest mass gathering event, the Thunder Over Louisville Fireworks Show, one of the largest productions in North America, today hosted in the Commonwealth's largest city. Operation Thunderstruck full-scale exercise is the culmination of recent years of training. Focused on prevention and response to organized acts of violence in collaboration with our local, multi-state, and federal partners. This exercise is one of a continuing series of emergency responder building block initiatives, such as the many annual active shooter training and exercises hosted in Louisville and other large cities in the Commonwealth. The past mass sheltering workshop co-sponsored by the American Red Cross and Kentucky Emergency Management hosted right here in Louisville at the Kentucky Expo Center. In addition to the annual workshops for the reception of the Louisiana State evacuees. We practice with Metro EMA on an annual basis. Kentucky is designated as a host state and Louisville is the primary reception center uh, in the event of pre-landfall evacuation orders. Just to name a few of the precursor reviews and events that test our response capabilities in times of crisis. The exercise scenario is written to test and evaluate our ability to quickly and efficiently integrate the command elements of first responders from a variety of agencies into a unified command structure including law enforcement, homeland security, fire, EMS, emergency management, public health, hospitals, and all of our NGO partners, and many other government entities while responding to simultaneous violent attacks in two states along the Ohio River. This is the first time this has happened, folks. This is truly a benchmark uh, exercise Typically, uh, this is a real world possibility with sophisticated attacks now seen all too often in our cities across the nation. So Operation Thunderstruck highlights the continuing efforts in our first responder agencies in action taken in protection of our citizens to enhance the safety and resilience of our whole community. A special thank you from the Commonwealth to Mayor Greg Fisher for the, the full support of Louisville Metro government in this benchmark exercise. Director Myman and the staff of Louisville Metro Emergency Services, the Kentucky Office of Homeland Security, Indiana Department of Homeland Security, the Red Cross, all of our extended NGO participants and other agencies for embracing this opportunity in partnerships. I'd also like to thank our contractor agencies uh, the IMTC with uh, Jeff Wilford and again Clay with the Emergency Preparedness Group for putting this exercise together. Thank you. Thank you, Director Dossett. Our federal agencies have been great partners, uh, working very closely uh, with us in all types of uh, situations, and the ATF is here today, so we'd like to hear from their special agent in charge, Sean Morrow. Sean? Well, good morning. My name is Sean Morrow. I'm a special agent in charge for ATF. I'd first like to start by uh, congratulating the mayor and uh, our state and local officials on both sides of the river for putting on such a great event. 
Um, ATF is a unique agency uh, within the United States Department of Justice. A situation like this, we're, we're uniquely uh, situated to address. Our agents are highly trained uh, to deal with uh, shooting incidents, firearms investigations, and also explosives incidents. Uh, we have uh, explosive specialist bomb technicians that are, work very closely with Louisville Metro uh, uh, Arson Bureau and Bomb Squad. Uh, our agents work on a daily basis with the uh, Louisville Metro uh, Police Department on all types of firearms incidents. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, these type of scenarios uh, uh, brings to the table, it, it shows the limitations of what each agency has, but also shows our capabilities. So although we work closely with the police and fire department on a, a regular basis, we don't have the opportunity to work with a number of the other uh, uh, local, or excuse me, a number of the other uh, city agencies that we see here today, like the Family Reunification Center. So. Uh, great opportunity to come out and train together uh, to work closely with our FBI partners that we work with every day. Uh, glad to be of support uh, to the city. I also want to uh, comment on Jody. Uh, the mayor uh, pointed him out earlier. We've had a number of uh, significant incidents around the city in the last year and a half or so that I've been here. Anytime that he's been involved, uh, great organization, great communication, uh, really strong leadership here in the city that everybody uh, should be proud of. So I want to say congratulations again to them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, terror and terrorism is often a part of these incidents that take place, so we can rely on the FBI to bring all of their resources and personnel to bear to help us get through times like this. So we're pleased to have our deputy agent in charge, Quincy Barnett, with us from the FBI. Quincy. Good afternoon. Um, as it's been stated, uh, this being a terrorist uh, scenario, uh, would definitely fall within the purview of the investiga uh, investigative jurisdiction of the FBI. What that means is uh, the federal resources, the federal response to this would be immense. Um, so when it comes from uh, investigating on this side of the river, or on the other side of the river, uh, the coordination effort uh, would, be, would, would be immense, and we'd be working closely with our other federal partners in the form of the ATF, um, you know, in, you know, HSI, domestic, uh, Homeland Security, uh, as well as our other field offices across the river in, in, in Indianapolis field office. But what this exercise highlights, it highlights the, um, the investment that we, we all have to make within partnerships, right? Um, as the ATF just spoke to, we don't necessarily work with all of these agencies um, all the time. We very work closely with uh, LMPD, uh, we're close with our state, uh, KSP, uh, as well as many other law enforcement entities. Being able to have exercises like this where we can actually work through some of these challenges because when an incident does, if when an incident does take place, the federal response to that incident and all the resources that would be coming to bear, we're going to have to work through those challenges and coordination. So we want to make sure that the, the public is aware and uh, rest assured that as we continue to work through these challenges, as we continue with our training, uh, that we're trying to make sure we can get, get through those hurdles. So thank you. Thank you so much. As mentioned, this has been a bi-state operation to, again, we got to think about the maximum amount of chaos that could be caused. So we're really happy to co-produce this event with Indiana. So for the perspective from the other side of the river, I'd like to introduce Joel Thacker, who's with the Indiana State Fire Marshal. Joel. One more mode of transportation right now would be great, right? So, on, uh, on behalf of uh, Governor Eric Holcomb, Homeland Security Director Stephen Cox, uh, we're grateful to be a part of this program that, as, as you've heard, has been years in the making. And many of the folks behind you and the hard work of, of planning these exercises and from uh, conception and, and development through tabletop and now to functional exercise today. And uh, in Jeffersonville, we experienced uh, an active shooter scenario there as well with our initial responders, uh, Jeffersonville PD, uh, identifying those individuals, securing the scene and allowing our additional emergency responders to come in, treat and transport those individuals to the hospital. Additionally, we've had uh, working with uh, our EMAs and, and our folks behind the scenes, those individuals that are off site that are obtaining additional information and intelligence to share with us and also to adapt and deliver additional resources needed from our state and federal agencies. And I think when we look back on these exercises, two takeaways 
are always communication and relationship building. And we don't often work together, especially state to state. And so coming together to uh, get to know one another, to identify our strengths as well as our weaknesses. Uh, one of the scenarios on the other side of the river was uh, an explosive device that um, we know that the locals over there would call Kentucky for a bomb response. And we know that that couldn't, that couldn't take place today because of an additional incident here. So identifying uh, those challenges and working together uh, to assist and support agencies. So we hope these events don't happen, but when they do, we're ready at all levels. And uh, we're grateful to be a part of this today. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Uh, this morning's exercise focused on active aggressor and how first responders then can quickly assess and de-escalate the situation to minimize harm and risk to the public. And what, we'll, what we're practicing this afternoon is the community re reunification upstairs. So it's what happens after the incident. And talking to mayors around the country that have had these incidents take place in their cities, they often say the law enforcement response is these guys know what they're doing. They practice day in and day out. It's the family reunification part of it. And then the days after that of the multiple funerals and the memorial sites and people wanting to help out that is not as well uh, thought through. Fortunately, we've got a lot of planning and learning from other cities that have taken that. So we're our we've uh, conducted that exercise already this morning here with family reunification. So how do you get the impacted, the resources they need? How do they reunite with their families? Think about all the emotions that are taking place after an incident like this. And where do families go for real-time information and to report missing loved ones? So to tell us more about that, I'd first like to introduce Director Tamika Laird with Louisville Metro's Office for Resilience and Community Services. Director Laird. Wow, you talk about adapting and adapting and adjusting to the environment. We're doing that today. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks everyone who supported this exercise today. On behalf of the Office of Resilience and Community Services, we are grateful to be involved. Our team has been working very hard this morning in collaboration with multiple partners and agencies to establish a family assistance center on the third floor of this facility. The Family Assistance Center provides a safe, secure, and centrally located place for those who are affected by tragedies, such as the ones simulated in this exercise today. Family Assistance Centers are typically set up within a couple of days of an incident, transitioning from the Reunification Center, which is set up immediately. The Family uh, Reunification Center is designated place for use to unify victims that are affected, that their family members are immediately affected by an inc incident. On the family members of the victims who were killed or injured to seek information and services. For the purpose of this exercise, the Family Unification Reunification Center was established at the Clark County um, uh, Fairgrounds in Indiana. Had this been a real event, this likely would have took place on both sides of the river. We would have had both the Family Reunification Center and then also the Family Assistance Center. The Family Assistance Center uh, brings together local metro government agencies, federal, state, and local community agencies to serve as one-stop shop of resources and services to help our members um, and citizens cope with the issues that they have encountered. We've already have served 20 to 30 guests um, this morning um, who have presented a number of scenarios, very hard scenarios, I say guys, very hard. While we continue to serve dozens more this afternoon, we will seek various types of assistance. Services available include child and family services, counseling and spiritual care, helping replacing identification documents, lodging, ground transportation, legal and healthcare assistance, crime analysts, food and beverage, we are learning a great deal from the simulation about how to fine tune our processes and coordinate services. We look forward to the feedback that we will be provided by our evaluators. I want to take a special thanks to the Red Cross, 
Louisville Metro EMA, the coroner's office, FBI, hospital liaison, KCCRB, Marty Storch, of course, and Metro's leadership for partnering in the FAC. I also want to thank and acknowledge LMPD's Victim Services and Red Cross staff, once again, who are doing a great job say, um, serving our advocates for our guests, guiding them from um, the registration area to the service area. And a special shout out to Leo the dog. He's a very special therapy dog uh, working with LMPD. Leo is trained to provide comfort and support to people who, um, who he sure has brought a lot of comfort to us today. The exercise today is an accumulation of trainings and preparations that are actually started a few years ago. I know my team and the Resilience and Community Services, as well as all sure of the partnering agencies, a grateful to the FEMA for their expertise and skill training um, they have provided. Trainings like this solidify relationships and partnerships that make our agency and our community better prepared to respond and adapt to whatever may come our way. Thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you, Tamika. And our final speaker before we take questions will give us again that responder perspective, and that's Nikki Saladay from the Red Cross. Nikki? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm the Regional Disaster Officer with the Kentucky Region of the American Red Cross, and we've got a wonderful group of folks that have been in southern Indiana from the Indiana region that have been supporting the uh, Family Re Reunification Center, and we have folks here with the Family Assistance Center, and I first want to say thank you so much to whoever it was had the br brilliant idea to include the reunification and the assistance center in this exercise. It is very rare that we get the opportunity to be able to actually play this out in the way that we've been able to do today. And the value that we get from that is immeasurable. So thank you uh, both to our, our local, our state, our federal, and our community partners for being able to help make this possible and give us the opportunity for our staff and our volunteers to participate today in this exercise. Again, as many folks up here have said, we hope this is something that we never actually have to do together but I can speak on behalf of myself that today, I feel like we are better prepared, stronger and, and more ready if this were to happen. We've been able to build incredible relationships that we hadn't taken the time to do before, but we've done that through this exercise, through these conversations, and we've got a good plan being able to move forward and continue to develop those relationships to be able to, to support the community should something like this occur. In the Red Cross, we have the opportunity and the privilege every day to support people at their worst hour, whether it's a home fire, a hurricane, a wildfire, or an incident similar to this in a mass casualty and a terrorist type of an attack. And so again, just really appreciate that opportunity to, to practice it out. The more you practice, the better you get, right? And so just really appreciate that opportunity. So thank you so much. All right, thank you, Nikki. Appreciate that. So before we take any questions, uh, I want to thank our deputy mayor over here, Ellen Hessen. Thank you, Ellen, for all the good work that you do each and every day. I want to thank the Indiana Department of Homeland Security, the Kentucky Division of Emergency Management, Kentucky Office of Homeland Security, and our Louisville Metro Emergency Services and entire Louisville Metro government team, our federal partners, all the first responders for their partnership and cooperation as we work to ensure our region is prepared for a seamless and coordinated response to any major incident that we hope never comes. All right, with that, any questions on the event here today? Any of y'all can probably answer this, but how far have these trainings and these scenarios come in the past 15, 20 years? Yeah. Joe, do you want to handle that? Unfortunately, they've come, well, fortunately, they've come a long way, but the unfortunate part is it's because of all the different scenario or situations that we've had throughout the country. So we take all those very seriously. Um, we look at all the after actions. We look at what went good, what went bad. We bring subject matter experts that actually responded to these incidents to come in and, and talk about the things that they did. Um, so they've really changed a lot. Like I mentioned earlier, the rescue task force, you know, if you think all the way back to Columbine, 
you know, they, that was a long time before medical responders were able to get into that building, and that's something that we practice today with our rescue task force is getting them in a lot earlier and, and you know, performing life-saving skills on people that, you know, may not have happened, like you said, 15 years ago. So it's really changed. I'll just add, too, after each large national incident that's new, our team will go and benchmark the learnings at that particular place, whether it was uh, Pulse in uh, Orlando or Las Vegas, they bring experts to the city so we can learn from them so we can continue to get better and better every day. Anybody else? Yeah, we have, you know, kind of low-level everyday training, but something like this has a, got a lot of uh, mass behind it. So, Joe, do you want to explain, like, why this is $2 million? So the, the $2 million just didn't include this uh, scenario today. We, we had, the um, again, a contractor come in. Uh, they took, it, took a look at what we were doing. Uh, they did a gap analysis on both sides of the river. Um, we identified key stakeholders that needed to go through some training. We brought in incident management experts. Um, which really paid off for us locally during COVID because we were able to stand up an incident management team based on the training that we went through uh, with this grant money. So that really helped us. Um, and then, you know, we, we're already planning something for in the spring. We can put these on ourselves. Uh, again, what this allowed us to do was us to play our roles, have somebody else from the outside come in and plan that where we could where we could do the things that we need to do instead of us being the planners. So, you know, that was that was a lot of the difference in the scenario today. But we're constantly planning. We're constantly training. Um, I know there was a lot of things that that went on today that, you know, even our, our leaders in the community know that we need to do, you know, keep doing the same things good or you know, maybe take a look at some of the things that didn't go so good. So, you know, we're already looking at those things. Okay, well, I'd like to thank the media for giving everybody notice in the community that this was going to take place today so that they kind of understood what was taking place. And thank you for taking all the time today to cover this event. And one last big thanks to everybody for their great partnership and team building here. Good job.